हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम रेनू अरोरा फ्रॉम निस केयर न्यू दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल टेक्निकल प्रोसेसिंग क्लासिफिकेशन एंड कैटलॉगिंग दिस इज फ्रॉम द पेपर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ लाइब्रेरीज इंफॉर्मेशन सेंटर्स एंड नॉलेज सेंटर्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल we have explained the need of technical processing of library materials we have also stated the purpose of library classification try to describe the need of notation in library classification the various schemes of library classification which are available in libraries for organizing library collection are also listed besides this the concept of main classes of ddc and ccc has also been highlighted the next aspect is use of cataloging in library materials we have described the need for a library catalog and cataloging in libraries because we are using computerization we have demonstrated the role of mark 21 dublin core in acr2r in cataloging and explain latest developments in library cataloging technical processing section in any library plays a key role in carrying out functions of any library the journey of every document in the library to reach its readers starts from the acquisition section but it is the technical section that acquires the documents and prepares these documents for use by the users it therefore acts as a bridge between the acquisition of documents to their circulation this section attends to all the technical activities by professional and technical staff of the library the activities done here are chiefly classification cataloging physical processing shelving and filing of library material let's now try to know what exactly is technical processing before items can be put on shelves and then circulated from the library they need to be physically prepared library materials go through processing so that they can be located and used and returned to the library from which they have originated it is referred to as preparing the library materials for use tremendous growth in information resulting in production of a variety of library materials so therefore the next aspect that we are going to talk about is need for technical processing so due to so much of information growth we have a huge variety of library materials so there is necessity of categorizing of the universe of knowledge we have to arrange information in such a way that subject specialization is maintained systematic arrangement of documents facilitates easy storage and retrieval and besides this satisfaction of users needs is very much ensured library materials go through the process of technical processing so that they can be located used and returned to the library from which they originated so therefore technical processing has to be brought about by a number of factors and in addition to the above mentioned factors several tools have also been developed for technical processing of documents especially for arrangement and management of collection these are the vocabulary control devices like classification schemes thesauri cataloging codes subject heading lists etc these tools help in preparation of modern information services and products steps of technical processing in this module we have discussed in detail the classification and cataloging these are the two main steps of technical processing the steps involved in technical processing vary in each library depending on the size and the kind of library the processing steps usually vary by type of library within a library different types of materials may be processed in different ways basic steps of technical processing of library materials are firstly classification of the documents secondly cataloging of documents 
थर्डली प्रेपरेशन ऑफ शेल्फ लिस्ट एंड लास्टली लेबलिंग और फिजिकली प्रोसेसिंग द डॉक्यूमेंट्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल एज ऑलरेडी टोल्ड we have discussed in detail classification and cataloging which remain the two main steps of technical processing let's now try to know what is library classification as you know classification is putting things in order everything that we acquire or we own or we have we always try to put it together for example all the like things are put in one place and whichever are different are kept separately so in this connection library classification is defined as grouping of documents having same or like subject content it is a system of arrangement adopted by our libraries to enable users to find their material quickly and easily all the documents irrespective of their size no matter whenever they are written are naturally grouped together when they belong to the same subject therefore library classification by subject is essential for all the library material library material are classified for several reasons one reason is that it is difficult to find library material unless each item has a place where it belongs secondly it should be located if it is in the library another reason is that classification makes a collection browsable by placing items of similar topics together also with the classification number on each item staff can easily return material to the shelves to which they belong this makes the material available for the next user easily the main function of every library thus is to provide reading material to their users as this benefits the users library classification by subject is very very essential purposes of library classification there are several purposes of library classification however the chief purpose of library classification remains is to facilitate use of reading material the other purposes of library classification are to arrange library material in a manner helpful to the users and the library staff secondly to replace the material in their proper place on the shelves after use by the users thirdly to facilitate removal of unwanted material from the shelves fourthly to ensure that there is scope to place newly acquired material on the shelves in their proper place next one is to place material on the shelves as indicated or shown by the library catalog and lastly to provide every document an individual class number so that it has an individual identification or an individual number it is therefore essential that library classification should make the documents readily available to the users whenever required by them this is due to the fact that classification helps to arrange documents in the most helpful and most convenient order next we take a look at components of library classification the chief components of library classification are notation form division generalia class index and class number when we say notation it is a set of symbols which stands for a class or a subject for example philosophy and literature and its subdivisions other examples could be english literature representing a scheme of classification for the purpose of arranging books use of names of subjects broad or specific language etc we are making use of symbols these notation symbols vary from classification scheme to classification scheme secondly form division knowledge has to be presented in one form or another the form could be textbook manual dictionary encyclopedia etc these forms or styles of presenting knowledge of a subject could be commonly applied to any subject book classification takes care of presenting form in the form of class number next is generalia class there are certain books such as encyclopedias bibliographies and collected writings of an author which cannot be classified under any specific subject as these cover all subjects available anywhere everywhere hence these are classified under generalia class 
Next is the index. Index is an essential component of any scheme of classification, which is provided at the end of the scheme. It is of immense value to the users of classification scheme, especially for handling the classified part of the catalog. And lastly, the call number. In classifying, each book is provided with the distinguished number specified to it, which can be used for calling the book from the shelves and replacing it return to its right place. And this is called call number. The call number fixes the position of a book or any document in a sequence and helps to locate it through its entry in the catalog. In fact, each document has its own unique or individual call number. Although there may be several copies of a particular book, but each copy will have its, its own individual class number. Let's now know about the various schemes of library classification. Several experts have given several schemes of classification, but then let's know about some of them. There are several schemes in use worldwide. Popular amongst them are firstly Bliss Bibliographic Classification, popularly referred to as BC. Another one is the Colon Classification Scheme, which is given by Dr. S. R. Ranganathan, father of library science in India, popularly called as CC. Then there is the Dewey Decimal Classification given by the famous Melville Dewey. In fact, Dewey Decimal Classification is the first most popular classification scheme. It is popularly referred to as the DDC. Then there is the Library of Congress classification, popularly called LC. This originated from the famous Library of Congress. And then besides this, there is also the Universal Decimal classification, the UDC, or originated with the support of FID, it is now an independent body that is handling the universal decimal classification. Of the above classification schemes that we have mentioned, two classification systems which are most commonly used in Indian libraries are the Dewey Decimal Classification that is the DDC scheme and the Colon Classification scheme that is the CC. Dewey is based on a numerical breakdown of all topics and the colon classification scheme is made up of an alphanumerical subject organization. Dewey Decimal Classification, popularly referred to as DDC. This was designed by Melville Dewey in 1876. DDC is used by most of the libraries all over the world. It is an enumerative scheme of classification as most of the subjects can be assigned numbers directly from the schedules. Dewey divided universe of knowledge into 10 main classes with further subdivisions accompanied by decimal notation. This notation repeats patterns and develops subjects with parallel construction. It also repeats standard subdivisions so that it is easy to browse or locate the shells in a logical manner, the documents can be browsed and located in an easy manner. Dewey Decimal Classification is presently published in four volumes. The first volume provides introduction with detailed explanation of schedules, tables and instructions in classification and building of the numbers. Volume 2 and 3 enumerate the schedules. This means that all the class numbers are available in volume 2 and 3 and these are to be picked up by the classifier depending on the subject of a particular document. Fourth volume is relative index which is original contribution of Melville Dewey. The universe of knowledge is divided into 10 subject areas called main classes and each main class is again subdivided into 10 more subclasses and so on. Main features of Dewey Decimal Classification. Features are firstly the use of pure Arabic numerals in notations. Secondly, the use of decimal to specify subject terms that are specific. The scheme is compact and available in four volumes. 
fourthly availability of mnemonic devices that facilitate easy recall of classification numbers ddc also employs three minimum digits to the left of the decimal and availability of relative index to the diverse material in the schedule in addition to that the structure of ddc shows that in four volumes there are three decimal notations used for the numbers it comprises schedules and tables and organizes knowledge in 10 divisions as already mentioned presently the online version of dewey is also well available which is referred to as web dewey and it is available online at www.oclc.org oblique dewey doll dot version dot dewey it includes all contents from 22nd edition as well as quarterly updates one of the biggest advantages of online version is the mapping of ddc to library of congress subject headings and links from mapped library of congress subject headings to the library of congress subject heading authority records main classes of dewey decimal classification as already mentioned ddc arranges universe of knowledge in 10 broad classes each main class is divided into 10 divisions and each division is further divided into 10 subdivisions until the subject terms have been specified the first summary contains the 10 main classes the first digit of each three digit number represents the main class the 10 main classes of dewey are the first one represented by 000 is generalities second one 100 or 100 is philosophy and psychology third one 200 or 200 is religion fourth one 300 or 300 is social sciences fifth one 400 or 400 is language the next one that is 500 or 500 is natural sciences and mathematics the 600 or 600 represents technology that is applied sciences the 700 or 700 is for the arts 800 or 800 represents literature and rhetorics and lastly 900 or 900 is for geography and history the slide shows an example of dewey decimal classification this is taken from the class 500 which represents natural sciences and mathematics tables in dewey decimal classification in addition to the numbers given in the schedules seven tables can also be used for number building these are table 1 standard subdivision table 2 geographic area historical periods persons table 3 subdivisions for the arts for individual literatures and for specific literary forms under this there are further three tables these are table 3a subdivision for works for or by an individual author table 3b subdivisions for works by or about more than one author table 3c notation to be added where instructed in table 3b then table 4 subdivisions of individual languages and language families table 5 racial ethnic and national groups table 6 languages and lastly table 7 group of persons colon classification colon classification scheme was designed in 1933 by dr s r ranganathan the father of indian library science colon classification is an analytical synthetic scheme of classification the schedules of cc consist of certain standard unit schedules by combining the numbers in different unit schemes class numbers can be constructed for any subject the universe of knowledge is divided on basis of subjects known as main classes the first edition of the scheme was brought out in 1933 and the seventh edition is the latest edition but however the seventh edition is not much in use and it's only the sixth revised edition that is widely used 
colon classification involves analysis and synthesis. That is why it is referred to as an analytical synthetic scheme of classification. The number building makes the scheme somewhat complicated and difficult to work with. But once understood and followed, it works efficiently and effectively. In fact, majority of the Indian libraries are following the colon classification scheme. The fundamental categories in colon classification. In order to classify the document, Ranganathan has used five primary categories or facets to further specify the sorting of a publication in colon classification scheme. These are referred to popularly as PMEST. P stands for personality, which is the most specific or focal subject of any document. M is matter or property, that is the substance, properties or materials of the subject. E is for energy, including the processes, operations and activities. S is for space, which relates to the geographic location of the subject. And lastly, T. T stands for time, which refers to the dates or seasons of the subject. Universal Decimal Classification, popularly referred to as UDC. The UDC is the world's foremost multilingual classification scheme for all fields of knowledge and a sophisticated indexing and retrieval tool. The scheme is published in 40 languages. It is used in bibliographic services, documentation centers and libraries in around 130 countries worldwide. Library collections indexed by UDC can be found in library OPACs and databases. In fact, majority of the science libraries prefer to use the UDC. UDC was managed by International Federation for Information and Documentation from the year 1900 to 1992, but is now managed by the UDC Consortium, which is popularly called UDC CC. UDC was developed by two Belgian bibliographic persons named Paul Otlet and Henry La Fontaine at the end of the 19th century. Its arrangement is based on the decimal system which we have already seen in the Dewey Decimal Classification. Every number of the document is thought of as a decimal fraction punctuated after every third digit. One advantage of this system is that it is infinitely extensible and when new subdivisions are introduced, they need not disturb the existing location or allocation of numbers. The UDC is peculiar in the sense that it consists of a combination of both enumerated and faceted characters of the schemes and hence it is designed as an almost faceted scheme of classification. As already mentioned, the UDC is derived from DDC as universal since it encompasses the whole field of knowledge. It is a multilingual general classification tool for organizing all kinds of recorded knowledge in a library. It is an international classification system mainly developed for the purpose of indexing and arranging an enormous card bibliography which not only included books but also all kinds of documents, periodical articles, patent, trade, catalogs, abstracts and other micro documents in more than 28 different international languages. Library of Congress Classification Library of Congress classification was developed by the Library of Congress by a person named Herbert Putman in 1897. It is widely used in the United States libraries and is influenced by Cutter's expansive classification and the Dewey Decimal System. Universe of knowledge here is divided into 26 divisions and uses alphanumeric characters to represent a subject or subjects. The Library of Congress classification does not have any strong theoretical basis unlike many other schemes. The Library of Congress classification is a system which is developed by Library of Congress although but many of the United States libraries they prefer to use the Dewey Decimal classification.
the library of congress classification has been criticized for lacking a sound theoretical base because many of the other classification schemes were developed based on some theoretical aspects but this particular classification scheme was devised based on practical needs of a particular library rather than based on a theoretical background although it divides subjects into broad categories it is essentially enumerative in nature that is it provides a guide to the documents actually in one library's collection and not a classification of the whole word as such the next aspect of this particular subject is library cataloging let's know what exactly is library cataloging technical processing especially cataloging has undergone a huge transformation in the last two decades especially after the introduction of items in digital and multimedia formats in the library collection however the three standards which continue to have universal appeal among the libraries of the world before the advent of FRBR and RDA are the ISBD that is International Standard Bibliographic Description, the AACR2 that is Anglo American Cataloging Rules 2, and the MARC 21 that is Machine Readable Cataloging 21. Cataloging work involves making of the necessary catalog entries for a document. These entries are prepared to ensure easy retrieval of the documents. These entries may be of different types, each having its own specific function to perform. Each of the entries has to be prepared in accordance with the rules prescribed in the cataloging code being followed by the library. The nature and content of each type of entry may be influenced by the particular form of catalog. So, mostly here we have a main entry and added entry. Main entry will have the maximum information available and added entries are prepared to ensure easy or quick retrieval by any approach of a particular document. We have already seen what cataloging is all about. Let us now know about cataloging codes. The principles, rules and regulations for entering and describing books or other library material in a catalog are referred to as cataloging or catalog codes. Some of the early efforts with regard to preparation of cataloging rules or codes were firstly by Anthony Panazzi of British Museum Library, secondly Charles M. E. Cutter who was a librarian at Boston Anthenium also created an important set of rules referred to as rules for a dictionary catalog in 1903. Then the Library of Congress also developed list of subject headings under Margaret Mann. Besides that, several other efforts for preparing cataloging codes have been there internationally, which we will be knowing about in subsequent parts of the module. Some of the other cataloging code efforts were Library of Congress rules on printed cards in 1889 to 1930, ALA that is American Library Association and the British Library Association cataloging rules in 1908, ALA cataloging rules in 1911, ALA cataloging rules for author and title entries 1949, Library of Congress Rules for Descriptive Cataloging 1949. Then came the AACR, that is the Anglo American Cataloging Rules in 1967. This was revised and it's referred to as AACR 2. It was in 1978. Then the AACR 2 revised second edition came out which is referred to as AACR 3R98 and the last one we have here is the AACR 2R2002 that is revised in 2002. Genesis and Evolution of Cataloging Codes and Rules AACR cataloging rules which are heavily oriented towards academic and research libraries. Ever since their its origin in 1967, it has undergone three revisions, 1978, 1998 and 2002. 
it was the first code which emphasized on the choice of access points as a separate activity from the construction of heading used for any access point chosen that is entry should be under author or principal author when one can be determined and secondly entry should be made under title in the case of works whose authorship is diffuse indeterminate or unknown let's take a look at the various areas of description in acr2 revised edition 2002 the eight areas of description are based on the isbd format these eight areas are firstly title and statement of responsibility secondly edition thirdly publication description fourthly physical description fifthly material specific areas next is the series then the notes section and last in the eighth area of description is the isbn and terms of availability isbn is basically the international standard book number attributed to a particular publication in modern times we are not using the printed cataloging codes or we cataloging is also carried out in machine readable formats some of the machine readable formats are in fact there are three these are the mark format dublin core and mods we'll study about each one of the these in subsequent slides while talking about computerized cataloging mark 21 is the first name that has to be discussed mark 21 is a format and not a code and it has three parts which are leader directory and variable fields the leader identifies the beginning of new records and provides information for processing of the record directory on the other hand consists of a series of entries that contain the tag length and starting location of each variable field within the record and lastly the variable fields these carry traditional cataloging data or elements bibliographic information is entered in the fields both for access points and for descriptive cataloging a mark record therefore is a collection of fields and each field contains one unit of information within a record each field may contain one or more sub fields a tag in mark 21 consists of indicators and sub fields which are received by a single character code which is either a slash or a or a hash mark 21 has five formats these are firstly mark 21 for bibliographic data for encoding bibliographic information in records mark 21 for authority data for encoding authority data collected in authority records thirdly mark 21 for classification data this is for encoding data elements related to classification numbers fourthly mark 21 for holding data this is for encoding data elements in holding records that show the holdings and lastly mark 21 for community information this is for encoding data in records that contain information about events programs and services and the like for integration of bibliographic records another is in computerized cataloging another one is the dublin core dublin core elements are metadata terms properties data type and vocabulary encoding systems dublin core metadata initiative is a set of terms that can be used for both web as well as for physical resources it is a collaborative effort between the oclc that is online computer library center and ncsa national center for computing applications in the 1990s now it is a non profit organization which is located at the national library of singapore dublin core consists of 15 elements describing resources it is widely used for digital repositories hosted in e prints or d space format mods m o d s mods is a metadata created by library of congress network development and mark standard 
its office. It is derived from Mark 2.1, but unlike Mark 2.1, it uses text instead of numeric tags. It offers more granularities in its data structure. In fact, MODS is not as popular as Mark 21 or Dublin Core. Latest developments in cataloging. In fact, over the past few years, due to technological developments and need for cataloging the e-documents as well, there have been several developments in cataloging. The three major developments in cataloging are firstly, functional requirements for bibliographic description, popularly called as FRBD. Secondly, relationship between entities and thirdly, resource description and access referred to as RDA. Let's now examine the functional requirements for bibliographic description popularly referred to as FRBD. IFLA study group on FRDR developed an entity relationship model during 1992 to 1995 which was intended to be independent of any cataloging code or implementation. In FRBR conceptual model, bibliographic universe consists of several entities that are related to each other and can be described through elements or attributes. These entities are sorted into three groups, namely group 1, group 2 and group 3. In group 1 are the products of intellectual and artistic endeavors that are names or described in bibliographic records works, expression, manifestation and items. In group 2, those responsible for intellectual and artistic content that is person and corporate body. And with regard to group 3, we have subject of worlds that is group 1 and group 2 plus concept, object, event and place. Let's take a look at relationship between entities. There are three aspects to it, in fact, firstly equivalence, derivative and descriptive. With regard to equivalence relationship, it exists between exact copies of the same manifestation of a work or between an original item and reproduction of it. So long as intellectual content and authorship are preserved, examples are copies, issues, face simile, reprints, microfilms, etc. Second one that is derivative. It exists between a bibliographic work and modification based on work for example, addition, version, translation, summaries, abstracts, etc. Secondly, adaption that become new work based on old work, then generate change and fourthly, new works based on style or thematic content of work. Third aspect is descriptive. Here the relationship exists between a bibliographic entity or entry and a description, criticism, evolution or review of that entity. For example, annotated edition, case book, commentaries, critiques of existing works, etc. Let's now know about RDA that is resource description and access. RDA is designed to replace AACR2 that is Anglo-American Cataloging Rules 2 and it has its origin in International Conference on Principles and Future Development of AACR2 which was held in Toronto in 1997. After initial testing for three years through RDA Toolkit in 2010, it is adopted by Library of Congress on March 31st, 2013. It is published jointly by ALA, that is American Library Association, Canadian Library Association, Chartered Institute of Library and Information Professionals, UK. RDA inherits FRBR structure, which advocates for entity relationship framework. The RDA has been developed, which is considered to be a revision over ACR2. Let's take a look at the difference between RDA and AACR2. RDA uses the term preferred source of information as compared to chief source of information by AACR2. The title proper is 
instructed to be taken from title page in both the codes. Secondly, RDA makes no distinction between shared and mixed responsibility. It instructs to record all contributors as they appear on the preferred source of information. Thirdly, if there are more than three authors or contributors are found, RDA instructs to omit any but first of each group in person and indicates omission in a language and script preferred by the library. Instead of indicating marking of omission according to AACR2, for example, there are five authors, only the first one, Roger Smith, for example, will be picked up. Fourthly, AACR2 standardized edition statements, but in the RDA, edition statement is rendered as it appears on the title page. Fifthly, AACR2 specifies how to mention only one place of publication when more than one place of publication appears on the title page. According to RDA, all names are to be indicated by sequence, typography and layout as they appear on the title page. And lastly, AACR2 specifies for mentioned copyright date if the date of the publication is unknown. But in case of RDA, it has to be mentioned as date of publication not identified. So these are some of the major differences between RDA and AACR2. In conclusion, students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module, we have learned that the task of preparing documents for use includes both technical and physical processing. It is therefore both logical and economical to perform these two activities by the technical processing section. The technical processing work consists of firstly classification and secondly cataloging of documents. Classification provides a system for organizing knowledge. Classification may be used to organize knowledge represented in any form. It could be books, documents, electronic resources or any other material. The most popular schemes of library classification are Dewey Decimal Classification, Colon Classification, Universal Decimal Classification and Library of Cl Congress Classification Scheme. Cataloging on the other hand as a process has undergone complete transformation in the last two decades with the advent of web and internet technologies. Though the purpose and objectives remain the same but with multiple formats and potential of exchangeability, original cataloging is rapidly being replaced by copy cataloging using Z39 technologies. The three universal standards which have Worldwide appeal among all the libraries in the world are Mark 21, Dublin Core, M, and Mods 2. Latest developments in cataloging are functional requirements for bibliographic description, that is FRBD, relationship between entities, and resource description and access, that is RDA. Lastly, we have learned the difference between the AACR2 that is the Anglo-American Cataloging Rules 2 and RDA that is Resource Description and Access. The other aspects related to this particular module are given in the e-course material. The references and websites are also given. Thank you.